If you've got some text in Photoshop and you want to adjust the kerning between individual letters, this video is for you. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip. Okay, I've got a good one for you this week. I'm going to show you how to manually adjust your kerning or the space in between letters in Photoshop. Here's what I'm talking about. You have a text layer in Photoshop, but some of the letters appear to be too close to one another, or maybe too far away in some cases. So you need to adjust what is called the kerning, or space in between the letters. Or maybe you want to purposely move some of the letters closer or farther away from each other. To stylize your text, like so. Well, this is how you do it. I'm working in Photoshop version 23.1.1, so if yours is older or newer, it might look slightly different. So ordinarily, you would just change your kerning here in the character palette, which of course can be brought up by going to Window and making sure there's a check mark by character. Highlight your text by double-clicking on the T on the layer and using the slider by the VA to move the letters closer or farther apart, or changing the value here. But that adjusts the kerning equally for every letter, and you don't want that. You want to adjust some of these spaces individually. Here's how you do it. Hit Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and the right or left arrow to adjust the spaces in between each letter. Tap left, tap right, and adjust away. Then when you want to move on to the next letter, just lift your finger off the Option or Alt key, and use the right or left arrows to move to the next letter. And then adjust away again. And that's it! Seriously, I was using Photoshop for like a year before I realized you could do this. All right, let's do the tip. So once you've micro-adjusted your kerning, guess what? You can now uniformly adjust it again in the character palette, and it preserves your micro-adjustments. Here's what I mean. So I put that last Z way over here, and when I adjust the kerning for that layer in the character tab now, the ratio of the distance between the last Z and the one before it is preserved, even though the whole thing is more smushed together. Who knew? Well, now you do. All right, as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.